I'm here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our virtual happy hour. As you see, I have this beautiful, ooh, my hands disappeared. Okay, where'd they go? This virtual set behind me from our friends at Molson Coors. Tonight's virtual happy hour is sponsored by Miller Lite. It's great to be with all of you. I see all of you out there. Wow, what a crowd. All these like chats keep coming up, popping on my screen. Pop, pop, pop. It's great to see everybody there. We got a great program for you tonight. Now, this is kind of the first, first go round for us on this. So if we freeze up like that, or if we uh, disappear, then uh, we'll do our best. But we're all at home. We're all doing our physical distancing. And uh, we're trying to put some uh, stuff together for you to have a good time. Now, I'm going to ask a few baseball questions, you know, maybe a hard hitting question here or there. But mostly this is a time to kick back, relax, enjoy your favorite Miller product. And uh, we're going to get started here. So uh, thanks to Molson Coors for making this possible for us. This is great fun. We've got David Stearns tonight, Brandon Woodruff, Robin Yount, the Hall of Famer, and a special musical performance from my good buddy, Rhett Miller, who's kind enough to join us. So we're going to get to uh, all of that. Now, I want to introduce our panelists here. This is going to be interesting because what we're going to require out of our panelists is that they unmute themselves and unmute their video. Two-step process to welcome these guys into our virtual happy hour. So we're going to go with the most tech savvy of the group. Ladies and gentlemen, the general manager and president of baseball operations, David Stearns is here. And there he is. It worked, B.A. Be... We did it. We I did knew it. it. I love the pink frilly background you have in your virtual set, David. That suits you well. That, that's my bar of choice. They gave, they gave me a wide mm. array of options, and I chose this one, so I'm very, very proud. Thank you very much for being here. I do have a note from our uh, show producer, Tyler Barnes, and let me just go ahead and quote Tyler here. Uh, David, please be more fun tonight. Try to loosen up. So I'm just saying, yep. it's on you. This is a big performance art situation for you here. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of pressure tonight. Um, our, our senior vice president of communications and, and, and really the universe um, basically told me not to be too stiff tonight. He wanted me to loosen up, enjoy myself. Um, so I, I've basically been taking shots since 11 a.m. and I'm good to go. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. I can't wait to uh, get into this with you. Thanks for being here. Where are you, where are you talking to us from right now? I am uh, in my house in Milwaukee, um, where I've been spending a, a lot nice. of time of late. Um, like, like all of us, we're, uh, we're, we're social distancing. We're, um, we're, we're you know, doing our best to flatten the curve and get this thing going in the right direction. So spending a lot of time at home and, uh, and, and, and doing our best to, to make the most of it. Now, judging by the looks of you, that appears to be a self-made haircut. That, that, that is a very good observation. That, that, is, that is a very, a very good observation. Um, this is a, a self-done haircut. Um, I probably will not quit my day job to, uh, to, to, to go to uh, become a barber. Um, I'm hoping this lasts for the duration of the quarantine. I'm not sure I want to do it again, uh, but, uh, but it's better than, uh, than just letting it go. Very practical performance on your part. Well done. I would expect nothing less from the Brewers general manager, David Stearns. All right, we got a lot, a lot with David coming up. Let's bring in our second panelist. I feel somewhat confident this guy's going to be able to pull this off. Not only was he scheduled to be the opening day starter for the Brewers, he's been an all-star. He also hit a very memorable home run off Clayton Kershaw in the NLCS. And if he can do that, he can unmute himself and unmute his camera. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon... Woodruff, yes, you made it. <laughs> I made it, and I haven't run out of beer yet, so we're all good. Nice. I know you have plenty of Miller product there. Are you talking to us from Mississippi or somewhere else? I'm coming from my living room here in Mississippi, and I've got, you know, I've got my, is it showing up? There we go. I've got my Miller Lite with me, so uh, looking forward to having a good time and, and, and doing some chatting. 
Awesome. What have you been doing during the uh, the physical distancing, self quarantine? What's been going on in Mississippi with uh, you and your family? Not too much going around, and you know, in my parts, um, pretty much get up and and I, I got very lucky this off season. I put a, a home gym in my garage, so um, mm. I've got everything I need. So pretty much, I just get up in the mornings and and uh, get up and work out and get all my work in, and then. Uh, I think the best social distancing activity for me right now is getting out and going playing some golf. So um, I stay active doing that a little bit. So uh, not much other than that. I sit in the house and, and watch Netflix. That's about it. Do you, uh, just to keep your arm in shape, um, maybe if you're not hitting it so well, take some golf balls and throw them into the lake and whatnot, like just to keep the motion going? Oh, I, I keep it going. So uh, I've got, I got a net. I just built a, uh, me and my dad just built a, uh, um, a pitch amount, uh, you know, about a week ago, and I've set it up in the backyard. So if I'm on total lockdown, I'm going to have everything I need. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been good. And I've got my wife. She uh, she's actually been the best throwing partner out of everybody. So um, really oh, yeah. nice. She's about five months pregnant, but she gets out there and throws them in the, in the driveway. <laughs> I love that. You and you need to be very accurate when you're playing catch with your wife. I am. I am. I, I try to because she lets me know real quick if I if I if I throw it too hard or whatever, she's going to be done. So. <laughs> David, I'm thinking uh, the big woo is going to be a control pitcher this year, not 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 a power pitcher anymore. He's he's got to hit his spots now. Stay away from the belly. That's right. <laughs> it's just, just yeah, yeah. Well, we 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 definitely want him having a elite command when he's throwing to his wife. I'll tell you that. There you go. <laughs> Stay out of the middle of the zone in more ways than one. I can't wait to tell that story. <laughs> yeah. So there's Brandon Woodruff. There's David Stearns. All right. Here we go. This is the big moment right here because while you guys are pretty popular figures, the headliner, let's be honest, is the Hall of Famer, the kid. And if he's able to unmute himself right now and show up on the screen, it's going to be our first cheers of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, Robin Yao. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Cheers. That deserves yeah. a cheers. Yeah. Way to go. Cheers. You made it, Robin. I made it. Clink, 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 clink. Normally, though, I was I so be, nervous. Well, I, under normal circumstances, I would say if I was stuck in front of my computer <laughs> at five o'clock, that it would be an unhappy hour. But, but under <laughs> the circumstances, we'll, we'll turn it into a happy hour. Man, is it great to see you? It's great to see all you guys. You talk about great medicine. Wow. Thank you all for being here. We've got a packed house, all muted, of course. We don't want to hear from people right now. That would make us extremely nervous. So we're the only four that are being heard and seen right now. But on the other side of the curtain, uh, we've got a huge crowd. And I think it's sold out in really, really quickly, record time. So these things only hold a thousand, sorry. Um, but we're all doing our part. So uh, great to have all you guys with us. Robin, I'm assuming you're in Arizona uh, still. So what's life like in the, in, the, in the quarantine era for Robin Young? How's this been for you? Well, it, it hasn't been all that different, honestly, other than the restaurants are closed. Um, as you, as you, you guys, the panel here knows that we had quite a bit of rain earlier in the spring while you, when you guys were still out here. So mm -hmm. the weeds are like off the charts. So I just came in from spraying weeds in the yard. So this Miller Lite tastes really good right now. Uh, nice. And What's that Robert, baseball it's behind? It's 94 now, which we weren't all, you know, uh, any time during the spring. During spring. That's, not, that's not the way it is here, man. It's cold. What's that baseball behind you, Robin? What is that from? How did that make this it on the top of all the things you have? This one here? Yes. That's Mr. Seelig. Okay. That's from the Seelig experience. <laughs> okay. So Robin Young has a Bud Seelig signed baseball. Oh, you know what desk. I got that's even cooler though? Let me grab. Please. If we're doing Miller, I can't wait. If we're doing Miller Light stuff. This is my favorite part. When Robin goes rogue, this is the best I collect, part. I have collect, collection of 
odd things. You ever, does anyone else have a Miller Lite bottle with the label on upside down? Wow. Whoa, that's wow. awesome. What, yeah. <laughs> what year is that from, Robin? We see it. That looks good. I have no idea. I bought a, <laughs> I bought a uh, case of Miller Lite and one of them had the label upside down. So I kept it. It's, on my, it's in my office. It's a collector's item. Well, if this was a normal tailgate scenario, there'd be a lot of those labels upside down. But I'm thinking maybe there are now. But you actually have a label that is <laughs> no, that's upside the way down. That, that's the way it came from the factory. I think one of the workers that day had too many on the job. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Wh where are your MVP awards, Robin? Are they somewhere in that mix? Or... They're, they're keep... up there. Okay. Up, awesome. Up there. All right. I, I'm going to take your word for it. The, you got two of them. If I turn my screen, will it go up there? Oh, God. I don't know. This is getting risky now. Keep going. Oh, Keep going. I, I might drop it. Oh, oh. I so saw the bottom are. of Oh, there they there are. are. <laughs> Look at that. My wife put those up when I was coaching in Milwaukee. And that's oh. your Hall of Fame plaque, I'm, I'm thinking? We found them in the... No, oh. you know what? No. The Hall of Fame plaques that they give you, the actual individual, aren't there about this big? Oh, I'm, like a coaster. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Hold on. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I didn't expect it going this way, but we're just taking a tour in Robin's office. <laughs> I love it. While Robin's doing that, I have a wow. so everybody, you can. Was over there on the shelf. Oh, look at that! It's tiny. Look wow. at that. Are you? Are were you happy with that that image of yourself? Well, I sure wasn't sad. It's pretty nice to get one of these. Oh, man. Keep that handy. That's good luck. I have uh, a, a poll question. So here, here's what I want to do. It's across oh, the way from my desk. I usually shoot it with a BB gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fans, listen in here. Uh, everybody, you can, you can participate. Uh, obviously, we can't get to all the questions, but you can go to the Q&A section. You can ask questions. I have a poll for you. So we have two polls today, and we're gonna we're gonna make this fun and make it uh, interactive. So the first question is: You're in the first question, Robin. This is good. So the the first poll question is: Who would you most not you, Robin, but who would I most like to have a cold beer with at my favorite local bar? Robin Yao, Bob Uber, are, <laughs> Hank I Aaron. To answer this? No, no, this is not for you, Robin. This is the oh. part where you just sit back and, and enjoy yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Hank Aaron, Paul Molitor, Milt Mason was a nice add to this. He was the original Bernie Brewer. Niger Morgan, also known as T-Plush. And this might be my favorite here. Who would I most like to have a cold beer with at my favorite local bar? Cubs fan, immediately following Game 163 of 2008. Oh, that is a good poll question. So I, I really, I really appreciate that. Brandon, um, are you, are you sort of in baseball shape? Like how long would it take you to think to get ready to actually compete in a game? Whatever, if ever we get the green light. Um, I think, um, for me, I haven't stopped throwing. Um, I've come home and, and, um, uh, like I said earlier, I've got my weight room and everything. So I've, I've stayed in pretty good shape. Um, I'm trying to work out pretty hard right now. I'm trying to treat this this part as kind of <laughs> the beginning of the off season type thing to try to try to build some more muscle and, and get a little bit stronger. And, um, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. So I think if, you know, they said today, hey, we're going to have a spring training. Here's a little short spring training, two or three weeks. I'd be ready to go. So um, awesome. I feel pretty good. And. And, you know, I, I started I started getting over that little hump in the spring and started feeling really good towards the end. And then, you know, obviously we had the, the pause, but um, I've kind of kept that going. So I think I could, you know, be ready in, in no time. I love that. You're a big, strong guy, too. And uh, headed for superstardom, in my opinion, coming off an all-star year. Brandon, we saw the, uh, the home run. We've been re-airing all these games, a lot of games from Robin's era. And, uh, we watched your game from the NLCS uh, when you homered off Kershaw and came in relief. And, did a great job. I've got a lot of baseball questions for all you guys, but we really can't have a virtual happy hour unless we, we get some tunes in here. So at the risk of losing you, 
as Robin kicks one back, I would like you guys to just, if you could just mute your screen for a moment. And I want to welcome in one of my favorite artists in the whole wide world. He is the lead singer of the old 97s, Stuart Ransom Miller. Woo! The serial lady killer, <laughs> Rhett Miller is here. Yeah. Howdy, PA. How you doing, Woo! Rhett? I'm really good. How are you? Man, I'm so excited that you're here and all these other guys are here and we're having this virtual happy hour and our fans are at home or wherever they are just having a chance to sit back and have a cold beer and have a little something to talk about and be entertained by. And you come in here, oh, that a boy. See, I got to tell you something about Red Miller before he starts. Rhett's doing this concert series. He lost all these dates and musicians, they make their living playing shows. So Rhett is going online virtual at stageit.com. And he's not asking me to do this. I've been going into a lot of these concerts of his. There is nobody doing it as good as Rhett Miller. He's going like three, four days a week. Sometimes he's playing entire albums. <clears throat> and I'm just amazed by your talent, Rhett, that you can just pull all these songs out of your head and this great career you've had with the old 97s and your solo career. And we can't thank you enough for being here, man. It's awesome to have you on the happy hour. Oh, thanks so much, Brian. You know, I, I feel so lucky that I get to keep doing some version of my job because you know, so many of us just can't do it. And every time I get frustrated, because here I am in my weird office in my basement of my home in the New York's Hudson Valley, I think I can still work. I get to still sing songs for people and do what I love. And I'm actually been getting paid for it a little bit. So that's fantastic. Man, it's been great entertainment for me. I've been on a, a lot of your stage at shows. And now I want to give our fans a chance. By the way, Rhett's on tomorrow. So you're, you're going to do another stage at show tomorrow stageit.com yeah it, nine eastern right eight central yes and that show is actually my friday friends show where i have yes. like last last week i had nick offerman make my set list this week i've got tig nataro the comedian tig nataro she's making my mm -hmm. act and actor um next week is james gunn and then rain wilson's coming up so i get nice. other people that i that i know are fans of my music so that they know what songs to pick i get them to make the set list and i don't know just try and mix it up a little bit well you got a lot of fans out there and uh if ron swanson's making your set list you're good <laughs> by me so we're good so we can't have a happy hour without some tunes um i'm you you have a big audience but i'm the only verbal audience you'll have yeah. so I, I promise to give you as much uh feedback as possible the good kind of feedback <laughs> but what are you going to play for us tonight i'd love to hear something from your collection all right, so I grew up in Dallas. I'm a Texas Rangers fan, but I've become a Brewers fan over the years. Obviously, Miller Park, yes. and my name is Miller. I mean, I don't get any proceeds from the park or the beer, but I do love that sometimes when fans propose at Miller Park, they play my song, Question, so, mm -hmm. so that we can all be transported in our minds to a beautiful summer day. I'll play this for you right now. from a dream and her head was on fire why was he so nervous he took her to the park she crossed her arms and lowered her eyelids someday somebody's gonna ask Question that you should say yes to once in your life. Maybe tonight I've got a question for you. She'd had no idea, but she started to cry. She said in a good way, he took her by the hand and he walked back home. 
just multiply that by thousands. Yeah, so good, man. You're so talented, Red. Thanks. Awesome to have you. I know you're a huge baseball fan, as you mentioned, and you're a Rangers fan, but you've got like some lineage where your family was involved in the NFL too. Who was the, an owner of the Cowboys? Is that your grandfather? My dad's dad was born into a family, like his dad had had a textile mill that made them rich, right? So my dad's dad was born into a lot of money. And um, he, you know, at the time he was the youngest millionaire in America. He was, he was a bit of a playboy. He was a visionary. He bought the New York Yanks football team from the NFL. And um, they were a failing franchise, obviously, which is why they were for sale. And he moved them to Dallas, and it was the first uh, NFL team in the South in 1952. And um, he ran into a lot of trouble. They were an integrated football team, and Dallas was not ready for that. And um, he, he bit off more than he could chew. And the team failed in like eight games into their first season, and he had to relinquish control back to um, the NFL and they went and played out the rest of their season in Hershey, Pennsylvania. The next year they became the Baltimore Colts and they were winning championships within two seasons of that. And the NFL <laughs> sold the TV rights within three years of that. So my grandfather was so close. Oh man, yeah. that feels like a song in its own. Um, yeah. but we, I know you got a lot going on and you're busy tonight. Can we ask you one more song? Let's call it a virtual encore. Is there yeah. anything you know, you've got uh, you've got a lot of favorites that I enjoy. I mean, like something a little with some some pop to it. One thing I all love right, about right. Red is he's kind of like this punk rocker, but it's a different kind of punk rocker. I remember seeing this guy on the David Letterman show in the late '90s when I would come home from minor league baseball, and man, I just I fell in love with the old '97s and this guy from that day. So give us a little something going out, and then we'll let you get out of here, Red. Thanks for right. being here. Thanks for having me because this is my last song. I'll play you the set closer. Every night the old 97s end with this song I'll play for you right now. Thanks. Go Brewers. Let's get baseball going soon. Get, get the world going. Everybody hang in there. Thanks for having me, y'all. I got a time bomb in my mind, mom. I hate chicken, but I don't know why. I call the police. They don't like me. I hear them whispering. I walk by oh, oh. I've got a landmine in my bloodline. I'm not immune to get blown apart. She's like a claymore. That's what she's there for. She's waiting around here to get blown apart. Oh, oh.
you're the best, man. He does this every night and brings it for like uh, an hour and a half, two hours. You're the real deal, Red. I can't thank you enough for being here, man. You're our first official virtual happy hour troubadour. Nice. Thanks, DA. Love you, man. All right. Thanks, Red. Take care. Everybody else, unmute. All our panelists, Rhett Miller, the great Rhett Miller, has been with us. Uh, I just asked him if he'd play a couple songs, and he, he said, of course. And don't forget, his show on stageit.com, he's doing all these virtual shows from right there in his living room. Uh, he's money. He's doing it every, you know, maybe three or four times a week. He's got another one on um, uh, tomorrow, actually, at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. And then uh, he's got an album coming out with the old 97s. It's going to be coming out um, in uh, July. So what do you guys think about Rhett Miller? David Stearns, I know you're into a little good hardcore acoustic music. Uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed he was able to do that on command on a Zoom chat. That's not easy. <laughs> that, 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 that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Robin, I see you got a guitar back there and on the wall. Is that you thinking about yeah. maybe a duet or something? No, not really. I'm, I don't have a whole lot of musical <laughs> talent. But that one is uh, that's from Toby Keith. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. Yeah. No, but that last song reminded me. Unfortunately, that last song that Rhett just played it back, brought back some memories, and they they weren't fond, unfortunately. <laughs> they were uh, after Game Seven of 1982 World Series. I felt like I had a time bomb in my mind. Yes, I know. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a there's a lot of darkness in that uh, in that. Yeah, that, was, that, one, that song didn't really do that much for me positively. <laughs> That's okay. We could have a a psychological session here if you need to. I mean, Brandon, he's uh, he's a I, mental I, monster. I so that for a long time. Yeah, I needed one of those for a long time. <laughs> hey, I got a question here, guys. So, hey, by the way, thanks to Rep Miller. That was awesome. I mean, think of the talent right here that's on this call. So uh, if you made it into this virtual happy hour, Rhett Miller of the old 97s was our entertainment. And look at these guys that are on here with us. Consider yourself one of the lucky ones. Uh, I do have, I want to get to some questions uh, from fans and get to as many as I can. Don't forget the poll question is up as well. Um, but there is a question from our, our guy Buster Olney of ESPN. And uh, he wants to know from all you guys, I'll start with you, Brandon also known as the big woo, as yeah. we call them. Um, how, are you main, uh, how are you maintaining your quarantine sanity? Like, not baseball stuff, but and you said you're playing golf, but board games, are you binging any TV series? And if so, give us a, give us a sense of what's going on. Um, I'm definitely uh, watching a lot of TV. Uh, me and my wife, she got me on the show called Parenthood. It was on NBC. Um, just a lighthearted, good show. Been watching it. Um, other than that, I mean, it's pretty much, you know, I I get up, do all my work, and 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 just just hang out. Uh, we've we've done a uh, me and my wife did a puzzle. We finished it this past week, so um, a thousand piece puzzle. That honestly, I'm not a fan of puzzles. That I get a headache about ten minutes in every time. Um, so she did all the work. I kind of come in on the back end and close it out. So uh, <laughs> I did the tough part, but other than that, just. I mean, we're just trying to do our part, just trying to, um, you know, stay at home. Um, it, it's it's kind of bad to say, but I haven't been to see my parents as much as I wanted to, um, and and go back home and uh, see them because I'm trying I'm trying to do the right thing and trying to to get back to playing some baseball. Mm. Yeah. By the way, for all of those out there, if you're in the healthcare industry, if you're on the front lines in any way, if you're in food service or if you're you're providing a service. Um, that's helping keep our country going now. Thank you very much. We appreciate you more than you know, and that's why we want to be able to, to bring some of this to you. All right, for you, David, same question, but what's, you know, how have you been able to conduct business uh, during this time? And then balancing family and business. And I mean, I know you've got a little one in the house as well, so I, I'm sure uh, you're being pulled in a number of directions at this point. It's different. It's it's different than any of us has ever experienced, right? We're 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 all working from home in various capacities. For for players, that means trying to find a way to work out in your garage, trying to f find a way to work out 
in your backyard. Um, for front offices, it means trying to find a corner of your house um, that's maybe a little bit quieter where, where you can make some phone calls. I think my days now are almost exclusively spent on Zoom or, or on phone calls. And, and that's, what, that's how we're communicating. Um, you know, these, these, are, these are pretty big operations from uh, an employee standpoint. We've got 200 baseball operations employees. We've got close to 300 players when you include all of our minor leaguers. And, and the big challenge for all of us now, the big objective is to keep in touch with everyone. We want to know how everyone's doing. We want to make sure they're safe, their families are safe. Um, we want to understand how they're, how they're coping with this. And so we try to get on the phone as much as possible, um, try to stay connected as much as possible. It's been a big theme of our organization over the last couple of years is the connection we've been able to build with each other. Um, that's being tested in a time right now. And so uh, it's all of our responsibilities to, to try to keep that connection as much as possible. And, and really, that's how I spend m most of my days. Nice. Thanks, David. Robin, I, I'm, I'm curious to know if you've had a chance to chat with Yuke. Um, I, I texted with him a couple of weeks ago. He says he's doing fine, but have you had a chance to visit with him? I know you guys are close there in Arizona. We did. Uh, when this all started, the very, the very beginning of it, when everybody wasn't quite as serious about the social distancing and everything, um, Mr. Seelig and his wife, Sue, had you and Judy and Michelle and I over for dinner. And my wife was really worried about going over and spending the evening with, with, with those four to the point where she wanted to take our, both our temperatures before we went over just to be safe that we did, you know? And so we were going through our drawers looking for a thermometer because we haven't used one. I don't remember how many, well, we find two. Well, both of them are, they're, they're digital, they run on a battery. Then neither one of them had been used in years, so neither one of them worked. So she, there's a Wal, Walgreens not far, so she jumps in the car, runs to Walgreens, can't find the right battery. Long story short, she finally comes back with the wrong battery, but I can hold it in there with my fingers and make it work. And I take her temperature and I take my temperature and we were both fine, but because of this, we ended up getting to the ceiling's house 20 minutes late for dinner just to be safe but because she was so concerned that we shouldn't be around them you know in these conditions but Mr. Selig insisted that we come over um, so yes the answer to your question is yeah we've, we've stayed in touch with the Eukers, um and the Seligs that evening um, they're not doing a whole lot they're just kind of hanging out at the house but uh, yeah R rumor is you you bought the wrong thermometer and you sent that one to you, the one that said rectal on it. Is no, that that's, true? No, I, I had that one. And <laughs> unfortunately, I tried to bring it there and it didn't work either. So I, it wasn't that it was the wrong thermometer. It, it really didn't, the battery didn't work because it didn't work in either spot. The, the sad part about it is after I tried it there, that's when I put it in my wife's mouth. So I don't know if that's <laughs> that, oh. that's kind of what Man. you do when you've been married 40 weeks. So like, those, are, those are Hall of Famer problems for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> nice. Hey, uh, so, I got a question. This is from Zach, who's out there in the peanut gallery. Uh, this is for you, Brandon, but I would actually love to hear, because you've, you've answered this question so many times, I'd actually love to hear David and Robin's uh, thoughts on this. Um, Brandon, what is the first thing that went through your mind when you went yard off Kershaw in the NLCS? Okay, so yeah, I get this all the time. Um, I just remember, you know, when, when I made contact, I knew I hit the ball well. I knew, you know, because you don't really feel much off the bat, so... I knew I hit it well, but you can see in the video, I'm kind of watching the ball. I'm watching the center fielder. And in my mind, when I hit it, I'm like, okay, I got this good. And I'm running. And when I see Bellinger pull up at the wall, that's about the time I'm hitting first base. And then things just kind of go blank. Um, I'm not very emotional, but um, when I'm playing, I try to just go out there and be serious and try to do my job. And when I hit first, I guess I just lost it. And, um, you know, I did, I mean, it was the third inning, you know, in the game one and it was just, uh, I, 
I, it's just one of those moments that you don't really know what happens. And I, I barely remember giving uh, Ed Cedar, our third base coach, I barely, barely remember giving him a high five. And then watching the video again, um, almost killed Lorenzo on a high five. <laughs> Coming from people, I don't even know who was – people were touching – you know, going crazy. And all I can remember uh, – this is a pretty cool story. Uh, Curtis Granderson, you know, came over at the trade deadline and – he, he walks up to me after I go through the line and he goes, Hey man, I know you just hit the, a big home run. He's like, it's crazy, but you need to go back here in the back room and get settled down. He's like, you got to go out and pitch. Ooh. And if he wouldn't have said that, I, I don't think um, I probably would have been as calm or as settled down. Thank goodness there were zero outs. Um, so I was able to kind of go back and take a breath and kind of refocus and go out and, um, you know, was able to, to go put up another zero the next inning but oh uh, i love that yeah first thing that comes through my mind i just I, I mean i hit it and i was like oh man i i got him like that, that kind of mm -hmm. just my mind and then after that it was um one of those moments people talk about where you just don't really know what goes on so robin robin you've, you've had a lot of those moments too i mean not only just watching brandon do that as a fan back back then a couple of years ago but you've been in the middle of that too it just i David and I don't know what that's like. I mean, it's it's probably got to be like the world just stops for a second, right? Like there's no noise. Well, what goes through your mind in those moments when you're delivering in the clutch? Uh, for me personally, not much. <laughs> the, 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 the least I had on my mind, the better off I was. And, and I, I mean, I'm not saying that to try to be funny, but it, the focus that you can create in those situations is the key to success. And when you're so focused, you don't really feel any of the surrounding elements that are going on. It's afterwards that you feel all of that. Yeah. So in a way, as it's happening, there's, there's not, obviously in Brandon's case, it was, there was a lot of emotion immediately. Um, what he accomplished wasn't something that happens very often. You know, he was, he wasn't used to hitting a home run. First of all, I know he hits a lot, or I don't know. Do you hit a lot, Brandon, for a pitcher? Um, so a little backstory, I first got recruited as a hitter. So I, that's, people say okay. I look good in the box. I try to say, hey, hitting is, is still super hard. Uh, but no, I'm just not uncomfortable in the box. That's what I try to tell people. So um, I grew up hitting first and then kind of the pitching part kind of came later as I got older and got stronger. Yeah, well, you look, you sure look you, like you knew what you were doing that time. I was there. I was excited as you were in the, in the suite up there, in, in Mark's suite, jumping up and down like you were around the bases. <laughs> but it seems like uh, when you're actually involved in the moment, Sometimes the emotions don't kick in till later. Obviously, yours did it right then. But I think you got great advice from Curtis Grandison, mm -hmm. though, that been there, done that before. Exactly. And because of that, that's the experience factor that makes it easier when you've been in those situations to then continue to perform for nine innings. Yeah. Because the bottom line is you can't get too high or too low, no matter what's going on. Uh, because if you do, sometimes you lose your focus in what it takes to be successful. So that was great advice that, uh, that yeah. Curtis gave you. And, and you obviously took to it and went back out there and, and got him out the next thing. Yeah. Boy, I, I've never heard that story either. And I know, David, when you brought Curtis in, when you made the trade, not that specific moment, I'm sure you're not thinking, but the whole idea that he could be that calming presence. And that is a really good story, Brandon. Thanks for sharing that. You remember uh, the, the, the trade and bringing Curtis in and how aware were, were you of that moment uh, with the big woo there, David? That's the first time I've heard that story, but that's, that's, that's wow. a great story. I've heard similar, similar type stories with Curtis. He was only with us for a month. Remember there, I guess two months, if you include the playoff run, um, but he, he was a huge impact on our team that year. And that was, we made a flurry of moves um, that, that I guess it was August 31st, that right before that, that not that waiver deadline that year, um, Curtis was the last one we were able to finalize. And it was, it was within minutes of, of the midnight deadline. And 
Um, Ross Atkins and I, uh, the general manager for the Blue Jays, were, were going back and forth um, on text message. I remember I was, I was actually in my living room. The team was on the road. Our assistant GM, Matt Arnold, uh, was traveling with the team. I was back home in Milwaukee. I was in my living room, had my laptop open, um, just going back and forth like crazy with Ross, trying to line up on names in those, in those final minutes. Um, finally got the right name, uh, got the medical done, um, got the trade finalized. And, and it was the last one we pulled off. Um, it, was, it was a big acquisition, and, and he did exactly what we had hoped, everything we could have hoped from a veteran leader both on the field um, and certainly send the right tone in, in the clubhouse. Um, you know, he, he has that reputation for a reason. And even in our short time, um, we saw it, uh, and in terms, in terms of that home run, um, I was, I was watching, um, with, uh, my front office in, in our, in our box at Miller park. Um, and I think I turned to a couple of guys standing next to me. Um, and I said, there's no way that happened. Um, and there may have been an expletive in there somewhere. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, it was, it was, that, that, that's one of the, you know, more, we, we play a game of probabilities, right? That's my job is to play the probabilities as much as we can. Um, and, and sports continually reminds you at sometimes at the biggest moments, um, that the probabilities go out the window. You've got a hall of fame pitcher, um, as skilled as a hitter as, as Brandon is, um, that's a really tough matchup and, and that's a huge, a huge point in the game. And for him to come through like that was, was really an unbelievable moment. It'd be a, a moment for a lifetime. I, I remember um, a side story to that as well, Brandon. Um, I, I had a conversation with Joe Buck, who ended up calling that. I was calling mm -hmm. the American League Championship Series that particular year, which bummed me out because the Brewers were in the NLCS. But we had a conversation, and I told him, listen, if Brandon Woodruff, we were kind of going through with the players, I said, if Brandon Woodruff comes to the plate, don't tell, tell your producer Pete Machesca, first of all, don't like start unloading all the promos out, which is what we normally do when pitchers come up and don't get into a, a side story. I said, he can rake, make sure you stay on it. And he did. And they set it up beautifully. And, uh, they were talking about, you know, Smoltz talking about what a swing you had. And sure enough, uh, you fought kind of battled in that at bat. And then you, then you had the big home run. That was cool. Hey, David, that, that reminded me, you know, you're now like a big time famous general manager and whatnot, but, I, Tyler, our, our friend Tyler Kepner from the New York Times, um, mm. reminded me that you were kind of in pursuit of a sports writing career. And while he's very disappointed you didn't pursue that career, um, he does bring up a good question. Who was your favorite sports writer growing up? And what made you decide to give up writing and move into the front office life? My, my favorite sports writer growing up, well, there's this, this guy who... Um who went to Vanderbilt. Um, he wrote for, for New York papers. I think it was beat writer for the Mets, then the Yankees for a little while. Um, Buster only um, was, uh, was the guy. Um, I'm, 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 I'm just playing with Tyler a little bit. Tyler also went to <laughs> Vanderbilt and, and uh, uh, Tyler, um, you know, actually as I was growing up, um, I got uh, connected with Tyler a little bit. Um, he was nice enough to spend some time with me on the phone um told me a lot about what life in journalism was like what what the path of a of a uh of a beat writer is a sports journalist um I, I really loved writing I still love writing it's a big part of my job I'm, I'm writing um messages to our organization um every single day and uh and something I really enjoy so I, I was fortunate to be able to do it all throughout college um it, it's something I still really enjoy and um you know, baseball, baseball has a weird way of, of pulling you in different directions. And once I, once I started working for a club, once I was able to get my, my foot in the door in the front office, um, that's what really appealed to me. And I've been fortunate to be able to, to work through it on, in, on this side of the game and in this capacity. Oh man, I, I knew that part of your past, but I didn't know it to that, to that depth. Thanks Tyler for that uh, question. I am, we have a second poll, by the way. I don't think, I'm sure Robin's in here somewhere. Of course he is. Um, so here's our second poll question. I'll alert those back at the mothership. Um, so the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel recently listed their top 10 most famous moments in Brewers history. Um, we're asking you to go on this poll. And fellas, if you could kind of look at this on the screen as well, I'd love to get your thoughts on it. So Cecil Cooper's base hit in 82. Easter Sunday, that uh, great comeback. Rob Deere hit the homer and then, and then Dale Swain hit the game winner. Ryan Braun's game winning home run, which uh, broke the playoff drought in 08. Nigel Morgan's walk-off, that was huge. Tony Plush, 
Robin Yount's 3,000th iconic moment at County Stadium. You got the no-hitter from Juan Nieves. Paul Molitor's hitting streak, also part of that 87 season. Uh, Woodruff and Kershaw, that that confrontation that we talked about, that's on the list, Brandon. Game 163 against the Cubs and CC Sabathia arrives, which is my personal favorite in my era as broadcaster with the Brewers, CC Sabathia. Anything on that list, Brandon, that aside from your home run against, I'll take yourself out of it because you're a humble guy, but anything on that list jumps out at you? Um, obviously, I'm a little partial to uh, game 163. Um, mm. I've seen obviously a lot of highlights of uh, of CC uh, when he came over and just how hearing the stories of you know essentially him just dominating and then going on short rest and doing it again and pretty much just just carry the team. Um, I think that's you know that's that's obviously a, a tough thing to do. And then um, you know Bronny talking about that home run and in OA it's pretty pretty cool. So. Um, but for me, I think I'm a little more partial to the to the game 163 and just kind of everything that entailed for us to kind of get to that point and then um, go in there and beat them in Chicago was a was a pretty cool field. Yeah, that that was amazing, Robin. I'm thinking about CC Sabathia. I did an interview with him uh, that's going to air on Fox Sports Wisconsin. But in my opinion, and I'd love your thoughts on this, uh, Robin, because I felt like when CC arrived, it brought that buzz back to Milwaukee that you guys had in the eighties. And, you know, they'd have been up and down since, since the eighties and through the nineties, there were some moments, but nothing like the 82 team um, in the mid eighties, especially. And I thought CC kind of brought that, that buzz back. Like Milwaukee is a baseball town for the world to see. There was, there was an electricity in the air every time he pitched in 08. Well, he clearly did. And I was fortunate enough to be part of both of those. The That's year right. he was speaking of, and I happened to be the bench coach that year when we, ha- when we brought CC in late. And I tell people all the time, you know, we all know what a big man CC Sabathia is, right? He's a big man. But you know what? CC Sabathia's heart is even bigger than the size of that man. He, he, he wanted to carry the Milwaukee Brewers on his back all the way to the playoffs and, and beyond if he could. And if you remember, CC was a free agent that year. He most yep. likely was not going to sign back with us, with the Brewers. We all wanted him to. We wanted CC to Sabathia to be a Brewer the rest of his career. But it, it, it logically was most likely not going to happen. But that didn't influence CC one bit in the way he came to the ballpark every single day that, that last month of the season to do whatever it took to try to win the ball game. He wanted to be, he wanted to go up there and hit a home run to win the game. He wanted to pitch hit for Ryan Braun. He didn't care. He wanted to win the game. He and and I'm telling you, it was. I respected the guy so much for the way he went about his business that last month in Milwaukee. And, you know, he, he, we, we used him as much as we possibly could because he was the guy that was going to take us as far as we could go. And uh, I've never forgotten that. And, you know, I respect CC Sabathia as much as any player I've ever been around. Well, I, I, I remember that the finish of that 08 season, you know, Ned Yost loses his job with 12 games left. Dale Swain takes over and it's, there's a lot of unrest and it's just unsettled. Uh, the Brewers are kind of there, but they're going to need to have a great finish. And then all of a sudden Dale announces and tells us all that my bench coach is going to be Robin Young. And I mean, it like, it, it really put things back in order. I thought, you had a huge role in that, Robin. I know you downplay that a lot, but just to have your presence there and then to finish that season, 12 games, the great run that, that the Brewers went on and then on into the postseason. And that was a huge seal breaker uh, for Milwaukee as well. It had been 26 years uh, between playoff appearances. So I'll bounce this one to you, David, because there have been these, these waves of success and then struggles. But you come in in 15 with a whole new model, really. Like you came in 
Craig Council ultimately takes over as manager, but you come in with this idea that we're not going to go through these extreme waves. Like we're, we're going to do some things to try to stay competitive and then the picture every year. And after a couple of seasons, that became true. And you've held up to that standard. How have you done that? We've had really talented players and we've had guys take enormous steps forward. And, and we've seen that with, with Woody and guys who have taken it upon themselves to maintain that standard for the Milwaukee Brewers. It's one thing for, for me to say that and for that to be our goal. Um, it's a whole other thing for players to take that seriously and, and for players to take it upon themselves uh, to make sure that, that we keep it there. And look, that, that's all of our goals is, is to win every year, to put ourselves um, in a position to compete down the stretch every year, compete every single year for division championships. Our, our belief is that if you give yourselves enough bites at the apple at the playoffs, um, eventually you're going to break through and have that truly historic season um, that, that everyone will remember for, for eternity, for baseball eternity, and that's what we're after. Um, we came close a couple of years ago. Um, we, we had a magical season. We had one of those years where a lot went right. Um, we kind of caught the breaks for most of the playoffs and then came up a little bit short against the Dodgers. And, and then we saw what the flip side of the coin is looks like last year, where um, we played an incredible game against, um, against, uh, against the Washington Nationals. Everyone did their job. Um, and, and we just had a couple of bad breaks and, and it went against, the, went against us and, and the season ends. And so we've seen how it can work in the playoffs on both sides. And so the, the key for us is get there as often as we can. Um, that's what we're focused on. Um, get there as often as we can. Um, whenever we start up this year, we think we've got another really talented group, another team that can get us back to the playoffs. And then once we're there, um, we'll, we'll do everything we can to, to keep it going in the right direction. That's a perfect segue. Uh, we got a question from Kevin, who's out there in the audience. Uh, he wants to know, maybe this is not baseball related, but he wants to know, and I'll start with you, Brandon. As soon as you, we get the all clear, just not for just baseball, but life, as soon as it's okay, we can go out. We don't have to uh, do the physical distance, distancing to this level. Where are you going to go? I mean, what's going to be the first thing you do at that point, Brandon? <laughs> uh, there's not too much that I, that I really do. Honestly, I, like, I love the golf. I love playing golf. So uh, I've been able to do that just a little bit, but um, I've had a couple opportunities to, to go down with some of my college roommates on the coast and, and just hang out. Maybe, you know, I really don't know. Um, honestly, I just, I'm, I'm a very low key person. I sit around the house a lot. Uh, I like to go hunting. I've never been uh, turkey hunting until all this happened. So me and my dad, we've been, you know, quite a few times and um, getting to enjoy that being at home during springtime. Um, down in Mississippi, I haven't done it in probably 10 years. So um, I don't think there's one thing that really just pops to mind other than playing baseball. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty pretty low-key. I just I just sit around the house and, and, you know, just try to hang out pretty much. Every good turkey hunter worth his salt has a turkey call. <laughs> well, I can tell you um, – <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> I'm not a turkey hunter by no means, but, um, you know, I hear everything from my buddies. They say it's the most adrenaline rush you can have. I love to deer hunt. So um, we've been a few times and we, we haven't had any luck. So, um, you know, I, I don't do the calling. My dad does the calling. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to hear it. <laughs> You got one, Robin? You got a turkey call? I know David does it. I'm not even going to ask David. No, I have a whole bunch of turkey calls, but they're over there in, the, in my hunting room over there. <laughs> they don't come out of my mouth. You got turkey you know calls. What? They're all they're all called Gumby and Big yeah. Spike. Uh, yeah, that, cool. those, those are, are your turkeys. <laughs> those are turkeys, all right. But, but no, like Brandon had a hard time answering that question, and it's because, you know, we're all – we're athletes, you know, we're spoiled athletes that all we've ever done is screwed around our whole lives and we made a living doing it. So when you're asked a question, well, what are you going to do now? We don't know because all we've ever had to do is play, you know, and, 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 they're, and they pay us for it. So we, we, we are the most spoiled people on the face of this earth. <laughs> that, that is no doubt. I'm, I'm honored 
to be with all you guys feeling spoiled as well. David, how about you? What's uh, from a business perspective and you're trying to put baseball back together with your organization. I can't imagine uh, that task, but I know you have a bunch of contingency plans and I know there's no definitive answer when we might be back, but what are the steps that you believe will be necessary to get back functioning as a major league baseball team? Well, step one is we need an environment that's safe for everyone to, to congregate in, right? We, we need our public health officials, our, our governmental officials um, to tell us that it's safe. Once, once it's safe, we can turn this thing on pretty quickly. Um, our our player, players are motivated to play. Um, teams are very motivated to, to get players back on the field. Um, so once, the, one, once it is safe, um, and whether that's congregating in Arizona, congregating at your home ballpark, um, here in Milwaukee, we can, we can turn this on pretty quickly. Um, uh, we can get guys going, uh, we can do a spring training 2.0. I wish I could tell you when that was going to be. I, I'd love to be able to, to break the news right here and tell everyone, um, when that's going to be, but, but obviously we don't know. Um, the only thing we can do is, is be prepared when it comes. And, and, um, I'm really proud of, of our group that we're going to be prepared. Um, and we're going to be ready for a successful year. Awesome. Well, I want to give you guys a chance to uh, have some closing thoughts, talk to our fans who are all out there. And there's a bunch of them. I mean, we're, we're packed in here on this Zoom webinar today. But I do. Before that, I want to uh, check our poll results, our two questions that we ask, just to give you guys a sense uh, of where everybody is leaning in our poll results. Remember, um, the first one, who would you most like to have a cold beer with at your favorite local bar? And uh, Robin looks like he came in second. Silver yeah. medal for Robin Yao. Yeah, I see that. I can take second place to you any day when it comes to that. <laughs> well, well, you you beat out a lot of great competition there, including Cubs fan after game 163. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> All right, so uh, the second poll question, let's give you the results of those. This was the one about the 10 most famous moments. I'm really curious to see where this goes. I got to scroll up here. So... Uh, right now, Ryan Braun and game looks like game 163 is the winner there, Brandon. So uh, your team jumps in there as uh, the favorite on, on this current poll. Nice going. Yeah. You yeah. must be very proud. Very proud. <laughs> Where were you during that 163, by the way, Brandon? Were you just hanging out? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it got some <laughs> Inning, and I can remember uh, my chest beating out of my or my heart beating out of my chest at that moment. Uh, but I just knew I was like, all right, here we go. This is for all the marbles. So let's get out of here and get after it. But uh, you know, luckily, Hater uh, shut the door, and we ended up ended up winning. So that such a great moment at Wrigley. And how about the fans that drove down from Milwaukee? The last minute tickets that were fulfilled, and man, that place sounded like Miller Park South. That was awesome. All mm -hmm. right, David, we'll let you lead us off here. You're a good leadoff hitter. Uh, give us some final thoughts um, wherever you want to go with it, however you want to uh, close us out here. Appreciate you being here. You bet. Well, I'll just, I'll just keep going off of game 163 because that was a pretty good one. So let, let's talk <laughs> about that a little bit more. And um, I think that was replayed on Fox Sports Wisconsin last night, right? So um, I, caught, I caught the tail end of it. Um, and I caught the clips of, of Woody warming up in the bullpen there at, at towards the end of the game. And, and, uh, Craig would probably know this better than I would, but I imagine Woody was probably two batters away from, from getting in there and trying to shut the door. Um, yeah. if that, if that goes another batter or two longer, it's probably Woody's game. Um, but, but I was so glad that I, I didn't know that game was going to be on. I was channel surfing, uh, last night and I caught the last three innings of that game and, it reminded me how much we care about this, how good those yeah. feelings can be. Um, you know, we, we get into this and, and we're, we're in a grind right now. All of us are, regardless of, of what we're doing, regardless of, of where we are in life, this is affecting all of us in some capacity. It can really feel like a grind and we're just trying to get through each day and make the most of each day. Um, but when you see a moment like that, it, it reminds you of, of uh, how you felt, what it was like to go through that, the community um that exists in milwaukee around the brewers how much our, our fan base cares um for the last three innings of that broadcast you felt like you were in miller park it was louder when yeah. good things were happening for the brewers um than when good things were happening for the cubs so um you know that that really got my spirits up and it, it gave me a ton of motivation 
that when we get this when we get this thing going again, we need to experience moments like that. That's what this no is doubt. all about. No um, that's what this co- community is all about. And um, you know that that's what that's what we pledge to our fan base is, is we know they're sticking with us. Um, we appreciate the fact that they're sticking with us, and we're going to work as hard as I, we can to to get back to moments like that. If, if you'll just lift your right arm, your left no, your right your left arm. I'm going to give you a fist bump. Other one. There we go. Other one. There we go. There we go. There you go. <laughs> All right, Brandon, you're well next. Uh, some final thoughts. What do you think, bud? Yeah. Thanks for being here, by the way. You're awesome. I appreciate uh, you spending some time with us. Of course, yeah. First of all, just thank you, you know, for for getting in contact and doing this. I think this is really cool for the fans to kind of experience uh, this and kind of see how we're doing. And, um, you know, obviously, we, we're trying to get back to playing baseball as soon as we can. Um, but I think it's going to take everybody kind of doing their part and, um, you know, practicing the, the social distancing. Um, I think it's going to take that. And, you know, we, we play this game for the fans. The fans are, uh, are very important to us. You know, even, uh, you know, every time we step in Miller Park, it's, it's always loud. It's always, you know, it's always fun. So, um, you know, it's, we appreciate everybody being in this, um, in this chat that, uh, it's pretty cool. So, um, you know, we're going to do our best and, and I'm going to do my best here in Mississippi to kind of stay low key and, and, um, you know, try to get back to some baseball so we can play in front of the best fans in, in baseball. Hey, before we let you go, and I've told you this before, but if it doesn't embarrass your wife, you're a baseball hero in Milwaukee, but your wife's a real hero, man. Tell everybody what she does and her, her, her past and how she has just helped so many people in a real tangible way, man. I I love her. And I think she's an incredible part of the Brewers family for what she's done in her life. Yeah. So my wife, um, I don't know if most of the fans know, but she's, she's five months pregnant right now. So we're expecting in uh, September and um, you know, we've, we've been together since high school. We've dated through high school, through college, um, you know, got married after my first season in pro ball and she went uh, directly to, to being a nurse. She worked in the intensive care unit for, for two years uh, doing the, uh, those tough shifts where it's seven nights of 12 hours. And then, you know, she gets a week off. So she did that. And um, she's worked in the, uh, you know, the, the worst of the worst conditions. Um, and, you know, we came back and they were trying to get her to work uh, even when we came back. And I, I kind of asked that one. Uh, I said, you're not going to be able to go back and, you know, be around this. but um she's definitely saved lives um you know and that's that's something that you know she can be proud of and another thing she can be proud of is being my my throwing partner i know she she i think she mentioned today she she might go on the dl uh her arm starting to bother her a little bit so we might give her a little rest and i'll just have to play catch from my net oh she's awesome man and she is a real hero thank you for sharing that all right robin let's give you the last word man you you're amazing, and you know that. We all appreciate you more than uh, more than you know. You get a lot of love from the fans here, but the fact that you're willing to do this, there are a lot of Hall of Famers that are legends uh, for their markets and their teams that aren't as available as you are. So we're always really grateful when you show up. So uh, thanks for being with us, and uh, we'll let you send us home here. But it's always my pleasure being here. Milwaukee has been very, very good to me, and – I just love, you know, I think it was a, uh, the fit for whatever reason for me ending up in a, a guy from Los Angeles, California, ending up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Who knows how that happened, but it, it couldn't have been a better fit. Uh, I, I, I consider myself a transplanted cheesehead mm-hmm. uh, and, and say that proudly. But, uh, but I, I think the way I would like to, close this personally is we've, we've talked this evening about some extremely uh, emotional and, and uh, uh, great events in Brewer history and the highs that we have felt throughout those events, but the highs that the fans have felt throughout those events also. So where I'm going with this is I just hope sooner than later, we can figure out a way to get the game of baseball back on the field, whether it's with no fans in the stands or not, but get games, live, real games that mean something 
back on the field that the fans can be part of again, even if it's only on TV. Do you know how much that would mean to the fans now? Sure. To get baseball back on the field, even if it was just for the television cameras. And I think whatever we can do to try to make that happen sooner than later is really in all of our best interests. Amen. I'll uh, do a cheers to that. How about everybody pull the drinks up? This has been the inaugural Brewers Virtual Happy Hour, courtesy of Miller Lite. Thanks to our friends at Miller Coors. Blink. Thank you, guys. Great job. By the way, fans, if you're out there, if you're still connected with us, I highly encourage and would actually ask a favor that you would go to Red Miller's Stage It show tomorrow, stageit.com. Uh, he would love the crowd. He would love to interact, and uh, we appreciate him coming on as our first ever musical guest on the virtual happy hour. Thanks to Brandon Woodruff and David Stearns and the kid, the Hall of Famer, Robin Young. So long, everybody. I'm Brian Anderson. We'll see you soon, we hope. Bye-bye. Goodbye. See ya.